This week on Small Boat Big Ocean TV, we're redoing the entire bottom on the new and improved Howie T. Small Boat Big Ocean TV is brought to you by Howie T Sport Fishing, Bob K Marine, and Salt Weather, the ultimate marine forecast app. Hey everybody and welcome to Season 3 of Small Boat Big Ocean TV. Before we get started, I wanted to bring everybody up to speed. We had gotten a lot of emails on why we didn't have many videos for Season 2. Well, the long and short of it is, last May we sold our 2001 Proline 20 Sport and upgraded to a 2001 Cape Horn 24 Offshore. Unfortunately, the timing of this was right in the beginning and into the middle of fishing season. So we spent most of the summer getting the boat ready. One of the things we did not get to last summer was to improve the performance and the appeal of the current hull. And to do that, we needed to remove current black bottom paint via media blasting. We opted to have the media blasting done with fine glass beading, which is ideal if you're going to repaint the bottom. Once the media blasting was concluded, we had a chance to inspect the hull. We were in for quite a surprise. We found out that the media blasting actually opened up a bunch of blisters in the gel coat. Blisters form when water penetrates the gel coat via osmosis and interacts with the laminate underneath the gel coat, which causes a reaction, produces gas, which pushes up and creates a pocket under the gel coat called a blister. The next step to see just how bad the blistering was was to give the hole a good cleaning and degreasing with some heavy duty soap. After the cleaning and de-waxing, it was very apparent that there were literally thousands of blisters on the hull. At this point, we consulted a fiberglass expert who's been in the marine business for decades. His recommendation was, because the blisters appeared hard and to not exude any water, it was best to sand them down and only open the blisters that were larger than a quarter. Everything else would be sanded smooth in low spots or exposed fiberglass would be filled in with epoxy putty. We opted to use a pneumatic board sander with 40 grit sandpaper. Now that is very aggressive, but our thought was that the more aggressive grit on the paper, the less time we have to use to get the surface smooth and ready for putty. 40 grit sandpaper seemed to do its job nicely created a nice smooth surface and exposed all the low spots that would later have to be filled in with putty. One comment I do want to make is this may not be the professional way to go about this. To really do the job correctly, ultimately we would peel off the entire gel coat. Unfortunately, that's well beyond our budget and our time available. It's just, at this point, an unreasonable concept. Even though it's probably the right one, the option we chose, which is to sand the blisters down, fill any low spots with putty, 
add a couple, maybe three coats of barrier coat followed by two coats of bottom paint uh, to get us back on the water. Now I, I do want to add some logic behind why we chose the method we did. Uh, first off, we trailer our boats all up and down New Jersey and Delaware. So it's not going to be wet slip for maybe any time longer than a week per year. So osmosis doesn't really have a time to occur based on the amount of time the boat actually sits on the water. So that was the number one driver behind why we chose this method. Uh, I don't want to say it was the least expensive or cheap method, but it was the most reasonable based on our situation. As I mentioned earlier, the blisters, and we sampled about a hundred of them, all do not seep any water. They seem rather dry compared to other blisters we've seen where when punctured ooze out um, a foul smelling liquid. None of our blisters actually leaked any water, so our thought was maybe the, the boat has cured enough. It's been out of the water since last November and indoors since January, so perhaps it's cured enough uh, that we can sand these blisters down and add some barrier coats to prevent any more water from entering and causing more blisters. Yes, there is the chance that there could be water in the laminate and it could spread but based on what we've seen with the inspection, it doesn't appear that it has it is at that stage yet. So this is going to conclude part one of our bottom redo on the new and improved Howie T. In the next episode, we're going to tackle the remaining sanding of the bottom and the transom. Once the sanding is done, then it'll be moving on to the 3M epoxy filler. And then after that, we'll be ready for the fairing, final sanding washing then the two or three coats of barrier coat application followed by the final two coats of bottom paint so stay tuned for episode two this episode of small boat big ocean tv has been brought to you by howie t sport fishing bob k marine and salt weather the ultimate marine forecast app